Hello, Case Vernor Web Kaiju here. This looks like it's going to win the poll, so I'm gonna go ahead and start on it. It is the TV cut on the new Blu ray for King Kong 76, which is put out by Shout Factory through their Screen Factory label. King Kong is a 1976 movie produced by Dino De Laurentiis and directed by John Gellerman. If somehow you don't know the story, Big Ape gets taken from an island to be displayed in New York, escapes, and starts causing a ruckus. One thing that differs in the narrative with the other two films that tell the story is that the crew is searching for oil and not making a movie. I prefer the movie angle, but the change doesn't drastically hurt or help the film in my opinion. The Twin Towers are also used instead of the Empire State Building, and there's a narrative explanation to why, but likewise is neither a pro or a con to me. By the way, the TV cut was, slash is, if you prefer, split into two parts. The recap in the second part clocks in at around 8 minutes, beautiful on location rock formations, and there's a waterfall. If you haven't guessed, I'm big into waterfalls. Whatever this most likely stock footage is, is impressive. Would be in real life, it looks off with the rest of the footage in film. The acting is well done, I particularly like the actor who plays Fred's performance. I'm fond of little details like the shot through a small window that further adds to the feeling of Jack's confinement. Much better than a shot in cell that might make it seem roomy. The music is very good and really does wonders for some scenes like when they are traversing through the fog. The tracking shots of Kong are pretty cool and I love the thought of a set filled with like 7 or 8 foot trees. I want to jump out of a giant prosthetic ape hand into water. I forgot Kong is revealed from underneath a giant gas pump. That's hilarious. I also get a good laugh from Dwan punching Kong. Car scene's cool. I wish I could tell you all the new and extended scenes in this cut, but I just can't. I don't really rewatch this film all that much, but this one's new and good. I love the train scene. So great and a wonderful use of his smaller than average kaiju size. The movie has the best examples of a lot of things. The scale of Monster City destruction scenes, disembodied ape arms, ape suit. Actually, I think I prefer the suit in King Kong Lives, but all the other examples stand. This shot with the hand really sticks out to me. Video generally looks very good, though this logo as well as a lot of the actual footage are quite grainy. Luckily it's the type of grain you get used to quickly and this is still the best version I've seen of this film, TV cut or otherwise. The Jack Fred banter can get pretty groan inducing at how obvious the film wants to paint one favorably and the other, well, not. It's not always awful, but it certainly is at times. Dialogue in general can be quite bad. Not just obvious opinion swaying bits, but also meta jokes always fall flat, and Dewan asking what Kong's sign is is, uh, stupid. Also, Jack's too damn smart. One of those characters that gets way too much right as a form of spoon feeding the audience information. There's a couple visible wires, but they seem to be black against a black background, so even when visible, it's usually just a small segment. Overly long chant scene? Multiple, actually. So much of it. Not sure if there were projection techniques or green blue screen, but they don't look good. Later on, there's some super blue effects. Why are these people running so close to Kong? If the title didn't hint it to you, I'm not going to be rewatching the theatrical version of this movie for the review. This is the longer version of the film, and I did watch it split up into two viewings, much like its original airing, but I don't know. The story just doesn't and never has grabbed my attention. Even the two other versions of the movie, story-wise, feel overly slow and dull to me. What makes it worse is that Kong doesn't even get to America, in my opinion the more interesting bits, until the 50 minute mark of the second hour and a half part. 
I get the main interpersonal relationship is supposed to be non-physical, but still between Kong and Duan, and I don't buy it. The scenes between them just don't really work for me. Lang is pretty and acts well enough, but by far my least favorite Kong girl, even behind the sequels. Additionally, the part where Kong is trying to undress her goes on way too long. Though I have to admit, great side boob. I like the snake, but the fight is um, barely a fight. It wraps around him and then they kind of roll around for a bit. At least there's the classic Kong kill. But back to scenes that go on too long, Kong breaking the wall, man did that take forever. Made worse by all the cuts to our protagonists and crewmates with agape mouths. Sure it was nice of the natives to let the crew set up their trap all day and night. Shots with moving backgrounds look odd and don't really match Kong's movements. Spoilers if you somehow hadn't seen either of the three movies telling the story or the multitudes of shows or other media portraying or referencing it, but when Kong falls it seems like he's coming from, well, not the top. Look, it's an okay movie to me, but still a must see. This and the original are both movies that I think everyone should see, especially if you like giant monsters. The original had more groundbreaking effects, and honestly I think they hold up better, but this is still probably the last big, possibly only US blockbuster suitmation film. It did spawn a suitmation sequel, and I do prefer the suits and some of the effects in it, but surely wouldn't call it a blockbuster, or at least nowhere near the type of blockbuster this was. Thanks for watching. Here's to the big one. Thank you.